PyTorch is state of the art. Tech giants like Uber or Tesla work with PyTorch. For us as machine learning fans, the library is easy to use, but sometimes hard to understand. There are many videos explaining PyTorch, but often they didn't do it for me. Most of them show you how to use PyTorch, but not how to understand it. So what does requires grad equals true mean? What does torch.nograd do? Or what happens when we call loss.backward? In this video, I will show you how I learned it and use my statistic background to explain this PyTorch functionalities as simple as possible. I wish I had this exact video when I was learning. Let's dive in. First, we need a simple problem that we can solve with PyTorch. Let's imagine the following. You've been working with PyTorch for 10 months now. By this time, you want to know how good your skill level is. So you ask people in the comments how good their skills are on a scale of 1 to 50 and how many months they've been learning. You get 8 responses and write them down. None of the 8 people have been using PyTorch for exactly 10 months, so you haven't gotten an answer to your question. Instead of giving every comment a dislike, you start developing a model that describes the relationship between time and skill as accurately as possible. So you're answering the question yourself with the data you just collected. We can see the script for NumPy on the left and PyTorch on the right. I will quickly walk through the NumPy script first and then show the PyTorch one. The two scripts are super simple to understand but necessary to understand PyTorch's functionalities. We start by storing our data in NumPy arrays and visualizing them. There seems to be a relationship between learning duration and skill level, but we don't know the exact magnitude. We estimate the relationship W as zero. Here, W stands for weight. Additionally, we assume the relationship between the two variables as linear. So we define the model we want to train to tell us our skill level as a simple line W times X. We know that after after 5 months of training, a PyTorch skill level of 11 should be achieved. However, the model tells us that after this time our skill level is 0. Either it's trying to insult us or it doesn't know better. We assume the latter. So we hand the model a tool called mean squared error or MSE, which tells it that the prediction is bad. This is the loss function whose value increases the worse the model's estimate is. We defined our model as a simple line earlier. We can see our data here in the scatter plot. The model loss is high when the line is far from the points and low when the distance is small. Currently the model parameter w equals 0 and as a result the model prediction line lies on the x-axis leading to a high loss. The loss should now be reduced step by step during training. These steps are called epochs and we set the number to 100. Then we set the learning rate, which controls how quickly the line moves toward the points, to 0.001. Honestly, I just picked both values at random. Okay, the problem is so simple that we are already facing the training loop. We already know what the first model predictions are. 8 zeros. So we store them in the ypred variable. Now the task is to train the model. Or in other words, we need to change w so that the MSE becomes as small as possible. We can do this by either 1 trying different values for w or 2 mathematically determine which direction to change w to reduce the loss. You know the answer. 2 makes more sense and is solved by taking the derivative of the MSE with respect to w. I will display the derivation here. Pause the video if you want to check the calculation or you can just trust me that I'm telling the truth. What we've calculated and written in line 36 is called the gradient. This is where the benefit of PyTorch becomes clear. With the script on the right, we don't have to manually calculate the derivative. We can see this in a moment. In PyTorch, the gradient is calculated automatically. Well, that makes our life a lot easier. Okay, 
We then tell the model to change the weight in the direction where the model error gets smaller by subtracting the gradient from the initial weight 0. A new prediction w pred is made with the help of the new weight w. This process is repeated 100 times. We save the weights and the resulting loss in the list w tracker and loss tracker for every step. This way we can visualize the results later. But wait! Before that, let's check if the trained model gives a realistic result. Here, we see that for 10 months, the model predicts a skill level of approximately 20. This fits the data structure and seems like a plausible solution to our problem. Perfect. We can understand even better what just happened if we visualize it. On the left graph, we see our data points. On the x-axis, we see the number of months and on the y-axis the skill level. The model in its untrained state is represented by a straight line in the image. Displayed on the right side, we see the loss on the y-axis and the value of w on the x-axis. The training process is clear to see. As the variable w approaches the true relationship of approximately 2, the loss decreases. This is shown on the right graph. Simultaneously, our model adjusts to the data, minimizing the distance between the line and the scatter plot. When the line is positioned right between the points, the training is complete, and the model is capable of making predictions that account for the learned structure of the data. We've solved our self-imposed problem. Now, let's get to the part that matters to you the most. How do we solve the same problem with PyTorch? Most of the script stays the same. To save time, I will only go over the parts that have changed. With this whole setup, the PyTorch functionalities requires grad, torch.nograd and loss.backward should be pretty easy to understand. Just like before, we store the data in the variables x and y and the estimated relationship in w. Instead of numpy arrays, we use torch.tensors, which offer a different way to store data compared to numpy arrays. I mentioned earlier that one of PyTorch's advantages is that the gradients are calculated automatically. To do that, we need to tell PyTorch which variable this should be done for. We don't do this for x and y, only for w by adding requires grad equals true. Remember how we calculated the gradient only with respect to w? This is why we only add this statement to the w variable. The model, MSE, epochs and the learning rate do not really change. Since the loss is now calculated using torch tensors and we only want to append the value to the loss tracker list, we need to select dot item. The next line offers us the biggest advantage. Instead of the complex calculation of the gradient, we can simply write loss.backward and PyTorch calculates the derivative automatically in the background. Meaning, for much more complex models, you don't need to calculate and enter the derivative as Python code. PyTorch knows that the variable loss is a chain function that contains the weight w through the function ypred equals model of x. So it can easily determine the value of the slope. Since we'll be performing another calculation with w in the following lines, we need to tell PyTorch at this point that it should not calculate the gradient for this equation. Otherwise, the system will think this equation is part of the chain function too. We tell this PyTorch by adding no underscore grad. The calculated weights, just like the loss, are appended to the w tracker list using dot item. The next line w dot grad dot zero resets the calculated gradient with respect to w back to zero. PyTorch accumulates them by default as this is beneficial for some neural networks. We can now run the code and see that it works identically to the NumPy code. Additionally, it is interesting to see what happens if we leave out w.grad.0. The accumulation of the gradients leads to an endless training loop, preventing the model from finishing training. You should definitely avoid that mistake. For clarity, I can also reproduce this in the NumPy script. Okay, that's it for now. If you have any question that hasn't been answered in this video, feel free to ask it in the comments below. I will respond. If you've learned something new, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. There's more to come. Thanks for watching.